Hey Monster Hobbies model car mechanics, how's it going? Today in this video I thought I would work on the 57 Thunderbird that I'm building for our custom group build. This of course is the Monster Hobbies model car garage 2022 group build. And I hope more people will join in as we go along. Today I'm going to work on that nice 312 Y block Ford motor. Now here we have the original instruction sheet for the Styline 57 Ford Thunderbird. And this engine, of course, is all chrome plated. It does say the all chrome T-Burn engine may be either installed in the car or mounted on the display stand on page four, whichever you prefer. So one thing I've noticed that the real Thunderbird engine actually looks like this. So as you can see, it's got the cylinder heads and the engine as well as the oil pan and the front cover are all painted red and same with the intake manifold the only things chrome on the stock engine are the valve covers and maybe a little bit up top fan of course is black same as the pulleys and the belt is flat black so not too much but amt actually chromed this so the solid chrome engine will really look good in our custom car now here's the instruction sheet for the 1993 release of the same car. And here we can see that we've got uh, all the chrome components. Now one thing that's been added to this kit is this chrome fuel pump, which goes up here somewhere on the front timing cover. But like I was saying here, you can see it says front cover is red, oil pan is red, the fuel pump is black, fan is black, belts and pulleys are black, as well as a generator here. The engine and transmission are painted red, the distributor is black, the intake manifold is red, the air cleaner is painted black. So, you know, since AMT chrome plated everything, the only thing that's really still chrome after you build the stock motor is the two valve covers and I guess the exhaust manifolds, but those would actually be painted with uh, steel or a gray or even a gloss black. Not totally sure on that. You Ford guys would know if you write in the comments down below. But that's uh, the newer engine with this addition of the fuel pump. And right down here we have the engine stand, a nice little three piece. It's got the uh, little brace in the front for the oil pan and then a little point at the back which the transmission would rest on and then this nice arrow shaped base. Here we have our fully chromed engine. There's the transmission and block halves, the exhaust manifolds, the valve covers, there's the cylinder heads, the fan, the distributor, the belts and pulleys, and the front timing cover. There's our air cleaner, our intake manifold, and the oil pan. We also have this neat little car here and a Thunderbird for the trophy. Now if I bring these parts up into the camera, you can see all the nice detail. There's our oil filter on there and our starter motor off the opposite side. Thunderbird logo looks really nice on there. There's rivets on the, or bolts, I guess, on the bottom of the oil pan. <laughs> Wouldn't be good to have your oil pan riveted on. There's the front timing cover. There's nice detail inside there as well. Same with the belts and the pulleys. The cylinder heads are a little bit uh, flush or flat, but they do end up looking really nice in the end. Everything on this chrome tree considering the vintage of it is just beautiful. Here we have the larger chrome parts tree and as you can see we've got the fuel pump molded on here. This is almost an afterthought and I don't think it was in the original kit at all. In fact I know it's not in the original kit. So this is not part of that other engine parts tree but we can take a look at it anyway. There it is. It's fairly simplistic. There is a little bit of an angle on it so you would have to clean off that angle and scrape off the front of the timing chain cover just in that little spot in order to glue it in place. So here we are on the bench and before I cut these parts out I'm just going to leave a link to the tools up in here so that you can click on that video to see what tools we're going to use on this build. Now I can get my side cutters in here and start clipping out these components. So of course that's fairly simplistic. So I will just clip all these out and then lay them on the board here. Here's all our chrome parts cut out off of the tree, the only exception being the distributor because that's a tiny part so I will clip it off and save it until last. 
I have made a video on dealing with chrome motors, which I'll put the link up here. Again, very nice. I'm not going to really get too deep into uh, this engine build, but we will go along and see how it goes. So the next step would be to get rid of all the little leftover parts from the sprue, the little attachment points. You got to get those down nice and clean. So I'll do that next. One thing I will say about chrome engines and any chrome parts is that in order to get them to stick together, you must remove the chrome off the contact surfaces. Same as if you had painted this. So that way, if the uh, chrome is removed, you get that nice plastic to plastic glue finish in there. There. So that'll hold it on there forever. So that means that we need to get rid of the chrome along here, here, and here in order to glue on the cylinder heads. The backs of the cylinder heads also needs the chrome removed so that they will glue on in place. Uh, the little loops inside here, or the holes, need to be cleared so that the edge of the manifold will sit in. You don't want to get rid of the chrome off the top of the engine because this sits over and you can see through to the bottom. So these are things you've got to test fit together and then find out where you're going to see the chrome. But here's what I do in order to get the engines nice and flat. So I've got this little block of MDF. It's a nice hard uh, sawdust glue wood sort of thing. And what I do is I take the engine onto there and I just, you want to cross sand. So I'm going at a 45 degree angle and then I'll reverse it and go this way at the opposite 45. And that will ensure that this surface is nice and flat. And there, as you can see, just with rubbing this, it gets rid of all that chrome on there. Might have to go a little bit more, especially in the front. So let's just quickly do that. So up at one angle, up at the other angle. Then you can go straight ahead this way and up and down this way. So now you've got that nice and flat. There we go. It's got all the chrome off. We'd have to do the same on this side. And one way to do that is to get rid of these little pins that are on here. They are location pins, but if you put them on the sandpaper block, they're going to get obliterated. But that's okay because, I mean, the location pins on this are not bad, but sometimes they can be really off. And if they're really off, then the engine is sitting off alignment. You know, not that radical, but, you know, pretty radical. One thing about chrome is it's very easy to chip it off. And when you are sanding, it will explode into little fragments all over everywhere. So you want to make sure that you've got it on a surface that's not important. <laughs> so what we can do is just clip these off like that. And then again with the sanding block. So there we'll get, well, could do a little more on there. But then once we glue it together, now we can move this around in order to get it aligned and probably get better alignment than at the AMT factory. And another thing is just to uh, glue this together and wash it off afterwards just to get rid of all this little, see, rub my fingers there, all that little microscopic exploded chrome. One thing you'll notice is that the cylinder heads have these holes in them. That is, of course, for our exhaust manifolds. Now, since this is all chrome and chrome plated on the inside, you'll have to remove the chrome from the area just inside there. Because if we look at how the exhaust manifolds go in, oh wait, I got that upside down. <laughs> you'll see that the tops of the pins will actually glue in to the uh, bottom of the holes or top of the holes, whatever you want to say. So that's where we need to scrape the chrome is on the tops of these pins and the inside bottom of that hole there on the inside of the cylinder head. So basically right in there. In order to do that, I can use my number 11 hobby blade and just put it into the hole and scrape just along the inside edge. So now if you do that, these exhaust manifolds won't go falling off when you go to touch it later on. 
So here we have our engine and just before I glue on the cylinder heads you can see how much of the chrome I've scraped off. This is where the valve covers are going to glue on and then with the engine block itself you can see this U-shaped uh, part where I've removed the chrome. Underneath I've taken off that little pin that was there and I used my block sander and sanded the bottom where the oil pan will glue and unfortunately I hit the bottom of the oil filter so I'm gonna have to touch that up with some silver paint and again along all these seam lines and there's a little bit of a oops underneath here where there's a tiny little hole in there that got uh, carved through. I had a little more trouble getting the chrome off of this on the contact points than I did this other motor that I built prior to this. This was the one that was in the parts bag from the Thunderbird from before. So if I just move this out of the way, you can see uh, just how nice this is. The only thing is the person that had it before painted the manifolds black and the front little uh, timing cover that was painted black as well. So I just painted all over that with uh, chrome paint or silver paint, Tester's Silver, and it does end up looking really nice. So here's the engine basically glued together. I've left off the air cleaner because I still need to do touch up along all the parts that got scraped off of the chrome. I'm going to use my old Model Master's silver enamel paint in order to touch that up. This works wonders. Of course, it's not pure chrome, so you can tell where I've painted it, but usually if you're not looking for it, you won't notice it. And then on the uh, fan belt, I used this Citadel water-based Abaden Black, which you can see sort of on the belt there. I will be using this little brush for the touch-up. This is a 5 over 0 brush, which is easy to uh, use down along here, just to cover up all the different scrapings. Here's our nice chrome-plated motor for the 57 T-Bird. One thing that I noticed is the fuel pump that was added in later on that they say goes on this side of the engine is completely wrong. There is no fuel pump on that side of the engine on the real block, and if there was, this alternator or generator would actually interfere with it. So I don't know who came up with that idea of using that filter on that side, but it's completely wrong. Here we have the opposite side of the Ford Thunderbird motor, and this little unit down here is actually the fuel pump mounted on the right side in the original run of this engine. So I really don't understand where that alternate fuel pump came from, what it was designed for, or why they would even include it in the later instruction sheet. But as you can see, the chrome on here looks nice. Even with the silver touch-up, you don't really notice it that much. And again, a wonderful little motor, and you can build it either as a painted block or in the chrome that it came in. Here's a rear three-quarter view of the engine, and as you can see, I even left the distributor cap chromed. Down here is where I painted the touch-up, but again, you wouldn't really notice it unless you were actually looking for it. Overall, this looks like a solid chrome motor. Well, I hope you enjoyed my build of the chrome-plated Ford Y-Block motor for the Thunderbird. And if you want to join into this group build, don't forget to check out the rules video up here. And always remember to leave that hashtag down below. That's very important because otherwise we won't be able to find your build once you put it out there. So until next time, everybody, look forward to making more on that Thunderbird, and we'll see you next time.